Hello, everybody. This is Catholic Dad, episode number 431, uh, The Descent into the Abyss. Um, and I, today I wanted to talk about uh, realism and idealism. And I, I know I've touched on this in the past, but I, I wanted to talk about what our society as a whole is doing and why uh, the repercussions of what's occurring in today's society is occurring. And so um, idealists, first, what are they? Well, they're people that uh, view the world in an idealistic manner, meaning uh, they have this Garden of Eden mentality and they think the world should be the way they want it. And they have all these uh, these great reservations about mankind and all like the beauty of like everything else. And uh, they're kind of living a flowery dream. The problem is the world is not idealistic. It's a cruel and nasty and hard place and it will punch you in the face, right? And it'll beat you up. And so idealistic people tend to have um, kind of a difficult time with the realism of the world. My dad, the old New York City police officer that I used to talk about, would say... Um, the most conservative person you'll ever meet is a liberal who's been mugged, right? So the liberal's the idealist, and then you give them a healthy dose of violent crime, and suddenly they become a conservative or more of a realist. And so, um, so idealism is something that younger people tend to be, and that, that makes a lot of sense, by the way. Uh, realists are, tend to be like what older people tend to be, like the, uh, the old grumpy grandpa that kind of lived through World War I, World War II, death of a child, or whatever else it is. And, um, you know, they're, they're hardened and they're battle-torn and battle-worn and they, uh, they view the world as it is and they're not trying to change the world for anything other than, hey, we're existing in this world and this is the way we are. Um, well, anyway, so what happened to the world? Like, the natural life, and uh, actually I'll, I'll tell you something, there's this old study I read that men tend to be politically conservative or liberal throughout their whole lives. I mean, they wax and wane a little bit, the bumpy road. But if you're born a conservative, you're going to stay conservative. If you're born a flaming liberal, you tend to be flaming liberal. Uh, and you may wax and wane a little bit over time, going to college, growing up, and whatever else. But women, they they don't. They actually, um, women, they, they vary throughout their uh, lives with regards to their situation, right? And so uh, women tend to be a little bit more liberal than men when they're younger. And uh, the way you make a woman more conservative is um, you typically marry her, okay? And then the way you make her even more conservative is you give her children. And the way you make her even more conservative is you make, give her more children. And the way you make her more liberal than when she started as a young woman is you divorce her or you leave her or you break her marriage or her family life up. And so uh, women's, women's political philosophy, their idealism for the world and their realism for the world tends to be situational based upon their situation. Which kind of makes sense because a woman, her, her entire psychology is tied to the survival of the child. And so if, if times get really hard and tough, she's going to want somebody to care for her. So she's going to look at the world a little bit more idealistically. And then if uh, she has a lot of stability in her life, she's going to look at the world. Oh, I can deal with this world. No big deal. And she's going to become more of a realist. But so well, anyway, so. The, the, the general trend of maturation, I would say, is you start out ide idealistic, which makes sense because, you know, you have the, the heart of a child, the heart of a, a young person, but then you start getting banged around in the world a little bit, and eventually you become a little bit hardened and a little bit tougher and a little bit more realistic. Well, it seems to me on an individual level, that makes a lot of sense. But in society as a, as a whole, I think the problem with society today, our broken culture, um, the fact that we don't relate well to each other. We're having class warfareism and whatever else and race riots and COVID wars and all the other garbage. And everybody knows if you just look at the world around you, that society's broken, that I would say that our world is stuck in an idealistic rut. It's not being realistic. It's not dealing with the world as is. It's dealing with the world the way it wants it to be. And it's kind of devouring and destroying itself. So what happened? What broke our culture? And I've been thinking a lot about this and I'm going to I'm going to um, say something that could be completely wrong. But <clears throat> so if the woman is, has the variable in terms of her idealism, realism, or political spectrum, and the man's static, okay, what happened in society um, that there's a, there's a point in society, uh, something happened that made us, and probably the woman, because she's the variable, more idealistic and less realistic, or more immature and less mature. And the man came along with her on that, on that journey. And uh, I've developed uh, two theories on how you be, you mature. You you go from idealistic to realistic, two ways. Two ways. You ready? Number one, intense suffering. Okay. So the Solzhenitsyn phenomenon. You sit, spend your day in a Soviet prison camp, and you experience intense suffering. 
you are going to mature by the basis of the fact that the world's not the way it is and you have to deal with it. Freezing on a cold bed, um, you know, being tortured or whatever else over years and years and years and years, eventually you realize the world is a hard and nasty place and you just kind of have to deal with it. So that's one way. The other way is this, and this is God, God's beauty, I would say, is, um, and I came up with this, I could be wrong, but I think it's probably right, is literally the conjugal act, uh, the marital act, where a man literally descends into the woman and they become one flesh. And and so that is a very idealistic thing that you do, but what flows from there is realism, children, right? And so the the child like or the necessary consequence of the marital act is life and it hits you hard, right? And so um, when you love your when you love your spouse unconditionally, um, you tend to direct your, your passions toward the realist and you tend to mature that way because you love her no matter what or love him no matter what and whatever flows from there we will accept and that, that's like the whole marital vow. Like, you know, I, you vow to accept children. That's what you vow. You know, and so, um, and so th that's the way you become more realistic. So what happened in the world? Why did the world suddenly become idealistic? And it's because... And I think um, Paul the Sixth and Humanae Vitae was onto something, but we started contracepting ourselves. And so we changed from that, I'm going to love you realistically, no matter what, the way the world is. And I'm going to, whatever comes from you, I'm going to accept as my own. And we're one flesh, to I'm going to love you conditionally or idealistically, right? And I don't want all the mess of the world. And I want to plan that act and what it, what it, get, or what it springs forth. And I think the whole process of contraceptive mentality put like literally a stop on on the maturation process of a society on whole on you know on on the entire whole and you know the birth control pill came out in the late 60s right or somewhere time in the 60s and we're about 50 55 years removed from there and i think what happened was generation after generation of generation devoured itself because it was loving each other in an idealistic manner and not accepting them the way they are. And you might say, you know, well, I had, you know, two or three kids or something like that. Yeah, well, that's true. But did you plan them, right? Did you, did you say, well, we're going to, this whole act of descending into the realism, did you plan them like where it wasn't, it was convenient for you and her? Did you make it so uh, it wasn't a messy process? Did you try to clean it up? Like, uh, make it like as like wait for you have have money or job security or whatever else or, or did you do it in the marital way except children as God gives you them and I think um, and I think once once we remained idealistic and we were dedicated to loving our spouse as idealists because of the birth control pill and whatever else um, that's when the marriage breaks down because you stay in this 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 zone where you love somebody the way you want to love them not the way you should love them as they are. And so I've actually said this before in a prior video, but realistic love versus idealistic love. What is a realistic love? I mean, what is idealistic love? Idealistic love is uh, newlyweds, right? And um, uh, you got yourself a new spouse and she's beautiful and she's you know giggly and bubbly and fun and smells great. And when you love her, um, that's idealistic love, but you drive home from your honeymoon, okay? And um, you get in a car accident and she becomes a quadriplegic and she's still your wife. But she's not the same wife she was when you married her. But you're gonna love her nonetheless, the mess that flows from there. It's like you're gonna be changing her diaper, you're gonna be you know, transporting her from bed to potty, you're gonna be cleaning her, she's gonna have skin ulcers and she's gonna be bloated because of all the steroids she's on, the corticosteroids. And you're going to hold her hand for 35 years and you're going to love her. And that's non-contraceptive love. That's realistic love. It's the idealistic love, the one that goes, oh, this is too much. Oh, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to leave her now. You know, it's just too much of a headache for me. And that's the contraceptive mentality. And um, that's just something to think about. Are you loving your spouse idealistically or are you loving your spouse realistically? And I will tell you, if you have a lot of disappointment for your spouse about your spousal relationship and it's a hard marriage and difficult marriage, perhaps you're an idealist and you haven't made the transition to a realistic lover. Perhaps you're an idealistic lover. 
And it, the same could be said of your spouse as well. I'm not placing any blame on anybody, but uh, just meditate about uh, on that. Meditate over that for quite a little while that we as humans, the mess of life, it's like the thing that makes us mature is intense, painful suffering and the conjugal act, the union of man and woman to become one flesh. And um, so then you might say, well, can priests become um, realistic lovers? You know, yeah, and absolutely they can because, or I mean, they can become realistic and they can because celibacy is intense suffering. It's hard, it's difficult, and it's a lifelong process. And so, well, anyway, something to think about. Please like or subscribe, get the mass, pray the daily rosary, and comment on the video. I'm gonna do more on this in the future, hopefully, but um, just something I've been playing around in my head. I could be completely wrong. But uh, God bless you. Take care and have a good day. Bye.